Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to run a quadratic regression using Microsoft Excel 2007. Again, we're using uh, data on ice cream sales in hundreds of dollars and we're using as an independent variable high temperature for the day in degrees Fahrenheit. We have uh, 20 days worth of data, data here. Although this is a time series, we are ignoring time and running this as a cross-sectional analysis. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is make a uh, scatter plot out of these two variables. And to speed things up, uh, rather than me running the routine for making the scatter plot, let me just show you the scatter plot that I already reproduced in a previous page. I'll copy it into our current worksheet right here. Okay, so based on this scatter plot, we see that as the high temperature of the day increases, so does sales. It uh, mostly seems to be linear. Perhaps there's a bit of curvature going on, maybe uh, partly due to a couple of extreme points. So uh, although it doesn't seem like there's much curvature, let's test that out. Okay, without running a regression actually, we could add a quadratic trend line to the data and see how much curvature is going on, and we can also see the equation. So right click anywhere on the points, add trend line. By default, linear is chosen, but we don't want linear this time. We want a polynomial of order two. That makes quadratic. So uh, let's show the equation on the chart and sh also show R squared. Press OK. Okay, I like to uh, edit this output. So uh, Y is really sales. And we'll put, uh, I'll say sales hat to indicate that it's the fitted sales. And then we've got the intercept. Let's just round that to one decimal place. And then the slope. Let's do that to two decimal place, places times temp. And then uh, this particular uh, quadratic equation. as a positive uh, coefficient for the squared term. So that means that the curve is concave up. Uh, let's round this to like 77%. So it looks a little cleaner. OK, and I think I'll insert a little arrow just to indicate that the curve is right there. Okay, well that coefficient for the squared term looks kind of small, and visually we can tell that there's not much curvature going on. So maybe we don't trust this curvature. Uh, overall, the regression is uh, very strong, as 77% of the variability in sales is explained by sales quadratic relationship with temperature. Okay, let's run uh, separately now the regression analysis and look at the output and uh, the primary purpose of this is to see if the curvature is indeed significant or not. So let's add a new variable at C here. I right click on the C column, insert, and I want to make a new variable called temperature squared. So uh, I'm raising temperature to the power 2 or squaring it. So I take each individual cell, caret 2, squaring it, and now they're squared. Now I'll run the regression. I go data, data analysis, regression, press OK. Sales is my Y range. My X range is both temperature and temperature squared. Let's see the labels. Uh, I've used the label, so we need to check that. Let's have the output range shown right over here. And uh, let's also see residual plots and line fit plots. Press OK, and there's my output. Okay, this needs a little bit of cleaning up again. Uh, I'll, well, rather than take time to clean this up, I'll just uh, erase these last two columns here, which are redundant, and then I'll paste right over this from uh, my previous work. Okay, so uh, again, cleaned up, and uh, let's just stretch this column out a little bit. 
Okay, so here is B0, here is B1, and here is B2, and I wrote it out in uh, the equation form right there. And this does match the equation that we got from the trend line, uh, except I'm carrying a few more extra decimal places in this equation right there. Okay, uh, here's R squared again, 77%. And here's S, my typical deviation between actual uh, sales and what this model uh, says they should be is $226. Remember, sales is in hundreds of dollars. Okay, what I also like to do back in my graph is uh, also type in the S statistic because these are the su main summary statistics for regression. Okay, down here I have residual output. This column is really my fitted values, or Y hats. So I generally abbreviate that a little bit. And here's my column of residuals. Let's format these to two decimal places just so it looks a little cleaner. Okay, and then uh, over to the side here, I have four graphs that were produced when I asked for my residual plots and line fit plots. Okay, two of these graphs we don't actually need. Uh, we don't uh, have a, we're not dealing with the <laughs> temperature squared, right? We don't live in the squared world, so we can effectively get rid of this plot. Uh, now here, this, is, this would be the line fit plot. If I clean this up, I can make it look like the plot over here. So I won't take the time to do that. I just wanted to show you there was another way to get the line fit plot, but you'll still have to do some editing. So let's get rid of that graph. Now I have two plots for residuals. And uh, let me just clean this up just a little bit. And I really want to show you that these two plots are almost identical. Um, if I rescale, let's start at 60. Remember, temperature starts actually at Starts at 60, goes to 95, by increments of 5. Okay, and then let's have this cross at negative 7, say, and go to 4. So I format axis for the y-axis, negative 7 to 4. Let's go by uh, increments of 2 is fine. Let's have it cross at negative 7, and let's get rid of these extra decimal places. So under number, change that to 0, press close. Okay, and we could clean this up a little bit more. Um, if I rescale this, this, uh, well, I won't take the time to do that, but if I rescale this to remove empty space, this graph is going to look just like the one above it. So this is really not telling us anything that this graph isn't telling us. So we can safely get rid of residuals versus this temperature squared. Delete it. Okay, so I'll just take another couple of minutes to uh, edit, well, a couple of seconds to make this graph look a little bit nicer. Okay, and I'll right click anywhere on the points, add trend line, and it forms a horizontal line across my points. So uh, for the most part, I think this looks like it's randomly scattered. Except for this outlier here, I think we could make the case that it also has constant variance. So we're checking the assumptions of independence and constant variance with this plot. Um, okay, so uh, the last thing I'll comment on is we wanted to know if the curvature was significant. And it turns out by looking at this p-value here that uh, the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, our typical significance level. So this says that the curvature is not significant, the p-value for the squared term. So what I would do next is rerun this regression without the squared term, and effectively I'm fitting a straight line. Go with the straight line. Okay, that's it.